<laughs> so it was January 2020. <laughs> Holy smokes. New year, fresh new start. Out there in the wild west with nothing to do for four or five days. I was just going with the flow. Gonna hang out with my brother, catch up on our year, do a little soul searching, do some skiing, eat good meals, and unwind after a very hectic 2019. Simon and his girlfriend Taylor live in Jimmy Chin's old house. He's the National Geographic photographer who made the free solo movie. The location is surreal. It's on the other side of the pass from Jackson, so it's nice and quiet and surrounded by mountains. Simon and Taylor are ski coaches at the Jackson Resort, and they were working all during the week. So I spent my mornings in my PJs, moseying around, making breakfast with his dog, Uller, and doing a little exploring. shooting film more than ever. I brought about 15 rolls on this trip and I ended up going through them all. And that's probably because of what ended up happening, but we'll get to that. I'll tell you what though, digital simply cannot replicate the feeling of film. processing in my head during these solo mornings. I had about 50 emails that built up over the fall from prospective clients. They all required a response, and I was having a hard time mustering the energy to give them well-thought-out replies. Also, I wasn't sure what I wanted to tell them. If freedom was the goal for 2020, did I want to sign up for more work? But how would I survive if I didn't? I was in limbo. And how could I get this far along in my dream job and somehow still feel in limbo? It didn't make sense. But I think it comes down to intuition. If you're not truly happy, your gut will tell you. You can suppress it and go about life with the idea that it's supposed to feel that way. Or you can take action and change your life. Most people I know have chosen the former because it's the path of least resistance. And while it's good to flow like water sometimes, life is about balance. And if you don't act like fire when you need to, the balance is lost. Oh my goodness. taking action. Simon has been drawing and sketching and selling his work in the local cafes. I'm so proud of him for finally taking the leap and putting himself out there. He's a true creative and he needs to chase it. All in good time, brother. Nothing good comes easy, but don't you dare ever stop. And so I stuffed all my thoughts in the crawl space of my mind 
and Simon and Taylor showed me around some of their favorite haunts, like this little one-room bar in Tetonia. Taylor and I sat upstairs talking about the beatnik generation and how we feel the resurgence of their ideology now. It's centered around creativity, freedom, and having an open heart and open mind. All the things that are important to me and a lot of my best friends. And we spent some peaceful nights making dinner, sipping red stripes and picking the guitars. peanut butter on top. And the whole time, the snow was relentless. One day, their friend Clark came over and brought his dog, and we all played in the snow like kids. All my mind's little problems were put on ice for a while. This looks insane. Yes. I'll snag an ice cold cruiser. <laughs> Top of the morning to you, neighbor. Simon's longer than I initially planned. And the thing that changed the whole course of my trip was I had met this girl who was staying with Simon and Taylor over New Year's. One morning when I was having my coffee, she was packing up to head home to Colorado and we talked in the kitchen. She's into photography and I showed her my cameras and the stuff I was working on. 
and she asked if I would be heading through Denver on my way home. It was out of my way, but I told her I would. It was the first moment of the trip where I kind of threw it all to the wind and decided to see where it took me. And that little moment, that idea of letting go of control and embracing spontaneity, that was it. That's the feeling I was searching for. So the plan was to be home January 7th or 8th, and by now it was around January 10th, and I was still at Simon's with a plan to stop in Denver. My timeline was officially out the window. So we hiked up to Mary's Nipple at Grand Targhee. It's kind of out of the way, and there wasn't a lot of people there. And at the top was a group of people from the Berkshires, and some of them went to my high school. I'm telling you, these little serendipitous moments will not stop happening. Little signs that tell you you're right where you need to be. <laughs> you I even went and checked out this little piece of land for sale in Idaho on a road called Brown Trout Lane. It was a lot and a little community backed up to a river. We all daydreamed about what it would be like to have a little cabin there. Take you guys for some milkshake? Yep. All right, Simon. So, I'm gonna load the, this is what I was telling you about, black and white. It's really grainy and really cool looking black and white. So to load it, pop out our back, put the point down, lock it in, and then you want to get this in the slot, and there's these little teeth that will catch, and you're going to have to bust a few rounds off. Make sure it's blinding properly. Change your ISO. Oh my. The days went on, carefree and relaxing, processing, processing. And then one morning we got breakfast and went to a bookstore and a little boutique shop where a cute blonde was working. I bought a leather journal with a notepad and some pockets because it was time to start doing something I've wanted to do for years but haven't had time or been in the right headspace. Time to start writing. I've got so many story ideas, settings, and characters. I've been nonstop daydreaming of sitting at a typewriter at my cabin, writing novels that truly take you away to another world. And then the idea of being able to make audiobook versions of them and really convey the emotion of the story I just know deep down that this is something I'm meant to do. Oh, shit. And so I started writing a novel on this trip. I was just doing it stream of conscious Kirwak style about the trip itself and the mental journey I was going through, all the people in my life who I love and am inspired by, and how it's all part of this big picture journey towards freedom and happiness. Now what happened on the second half of my journey changed my whole perspective and ultimately my life. I met people that deeply impacted my soul, 
And since I've been home, I've been studying profusely how to translate what happened into a well-constructed novel that can reach and impact as many people as possible. I can't wait to show you. It's the kind of stuff you can't make up. And so, by way of intuition, I concluded it was time to head east. When you feel the pull, you must go. Your gut will take you wherever you need to be, as long as your head and your heart are open to it. It's no surprise I felt things click after being around Simon. Things like that always seem to happen. So one last night of creativity and inspiration, and in the morning, they'd be off to work before I woke, and I'd pack up and head onward to the most important two weeks of my life thus far. Mm-hmm. 